Hello, I'm Yi Wang from Mitsubishi Electric Research Laboratories, and we're here to talk about our work, Robust Machine Learning via Privacy Weight Distortion Theory. This is joint work with Sushan Aron, Adnan Rakin, Toshiaki Koike Kino, and Pierre Moulin. The central theme of our work is exploring the theoretical connections between robust machine learning and privacy rate distortion theory. This is motivated by the problem of adversarial examples, where it has been shown that deep neural networks can be fooled by very small, even imperceptible uh, input perturbations. Uh, understanding these connections can be captured by this sort of system diagram. Here, uh, we have the original data, X and Y, representing the original data features and the label. And those are perturbed by some sort of mechanism they can think of as a random channel to produce Z. And typically for these problems, uh, the channel the perturbation will be constrained uh, to have uh, some sort of small uh, distortion between Z and X. Then a classifier looks at Z and tries to reconstruct the original label Y. And the goal of the classifier would be to minimize its cross-entry loss, uh, whereas the perturbation is trying to maximize that. And depending on whether we're looking at robust machine learning or privacy utility trade-offs, we would formulate this as either a min-max problem or a max-min problem, and the interpretation of these building blocks, the perturbation and the classifier, would change. The privacy preserving data release problem was studied from an information theoretic perspective that considered the optimal privacy utility trade offs. Therein, one were to interpret the perturbation mechanism as some sort of data release mechanism and the classifier as a privacy adversary that was trying to reconstruct, uh, recover some sort of sensitive information Y from the perturbed or released data Z. Here, the problem of mechanism design. Uh, to efficiently realize the optimal privacy utility trade-off was posed as a max-min problem and was shown to reduce to a maximum entropy problem. In the robust machine learning problem, we view the goal as to construct a robust model in the form of the classifier, whereas the perturbation uh, represents some sort of attacker that's generating the adversarial inputs. The problem of robust model design is posed as a minimax Problem. Uh, our fundamental result is to draw the connection between these two fields. We do this by showing a minimax result that shows that these two problems are fundamentally equivalent. And what that means is the minimax solution for the robust machine learning problem can ultimately be found via a max entry problem. Actually, a similar minimax result is seen in the literature produced by Shea and Farnia. However, it was limited by technical conditions that prevents its full application to adversarial examples. Now I'll talk a little bit more about what adversarial examples are and their background. They were first discovered in 2013 in the paper Intriguing Properties of Neural Networks, and this was further, further explored in a paper called Explaining and Harnessing Adversarial Examples, where this famous example of the panda uh, image comes from. On the left-hand side is the original uh, uh, image of a panda, and if you put this through a uh, state-of-the-art uh, image recognition model, it will say that it's a panda with a fairly high confidence. But it turns out that if you specifically craft uh, some perturbation to it that's very, very small, represented by this middle image that's then scaled by 0.07, and added to the image, you produce the result on the right, which is visually indistinguishable from the, from the original image. But now putting it into that same recon image recognition model, that model will think that it's a gibbon with 99% confidence. What this is demonstrating is that you, one can make very small imperceptible perturbations to the input of a deep neural network and fool it completely. In the literature, there have been many other examples of adversarial example attacks. Uh, for example, people have demonstrated how to add these uh, funny looking glasses that cause a face recognition software to misdetect people. People have even constructed uh, 3D printed objects that are misclassified, even uh, constructed road signs with subtle alter alterations that fall uh, road sign classification networks. Um, and episode examples have been demonstrated in other modalities besides images as well. Uh, there are cases where 
tiny imperceptible changes have been made to audio sequences to cause uh, speech detection networks to uh, completely fail. Avisor example vulnerabilities have even been demonstrated in commercial uh, products. For example, the Tesla uh, autopilot system with adding small stickers to the ground, it can fool that computer vision system into misdetecting the lane markers. But beyond the, the obvious safety, security, reliability concerns, I want to talk a little bit about why adversarial uh, examples matter, since it might give us better understanding into how we fundamentally use and apply ML. Um, you know, with, when ML systems don't work, we are left with the questions of how do we fix them? Do we need more data or more training? Is there something wrong with the model architecture and the depth? Further, the existence of fragility to adversarial examples makes us ask questions about generalizability. And maybe this is related to the problem of how do we avoid overfitting with these highly overparameterized models. And further, with the literature uh, looking at adversarial examples and defenses, it's been a back and forth cat and mouse game with new defenses being uh, developed and then new attacks demonstrating their shortcomings. And the interesting question to ask is, are there any fundamental guarantees that can help break this cycle. OK, so let's talk about how robust uh, machine learning formulations are put together. Let's first start with a conventional supervised learning formulation, which is typically formulated as minimizing some expected loss function with respect to the model F theta. Uh, for example, if F theta is a classifier looking at data input X, it produces an estimate of a posterior distribution of the label class uh, over some finite label set. Typically for classification, we use the cross-entry loss, which is formulated like this. Note that the cross-entry loss is related back to the conditional entropy of the label given the data uh, with this additional KL term that shows the mismatch between the true posterior and the posterior that is estimated by the classifier. The typical learning formulation is converted into a robust formulation by considering a min-max problem. Here, inside the expectation, we maximize over all perturbations Z that are close to, with respect to some distance metrics of the original input X. This formulation captures the notion of being robust with respect to the worst case input perturbation. So starting from the robust machine learning formulation in this minimax form, we generalize it slightly to strengthen the adversary. We do this by allowing the adversary to play randomized or mixed strategies to use the game theoretic term. Herein, the adversary can be represented by a channel that takes as input the clean data x and y and outputs the perturbation z. Similarly, we keep a distortion constraint on how much z can be perturbed with respect to x. Basically, z has to be within uh, epsilon distance of x with probably 1. Alternatively, we can strengthen the adversary even further by considering it only a expected distortion constraint on the adversary. Even more generally, instead of considering it from this channel point of view, we can realize that this only depends on the joint distribution between the variable z and y. It instead changes the variable back to x and view the constraint set as some general closed convex constraint set on joint distributions over x and y. This most general formulation completely subsumes the rest. Our core theorem is a min and max result that equates the idealized robust machine learning problem to the privacy utility trade-off problem. In this, we consider an idealized version of the robust ML problem, where we consider the solution space of being all possible classifiers represented by all possible conditional distributions or decision rules. The result essentially establishes that you can swap the order of the min and the max. So on the right hand, on the left hand side, we have the min max or bus ML formulation. And on the right hand side, we have a max min formulation. Now, interestingly, with the min moves inside, that further reduces down to a maximum conditional entropy problem. So it boil, the solution to this problem boils down to simply maximizing conditional entropy over the constraint set for the joint distributions uh, over X and Y on that constraint set. 
Further, by solving this max entropy problem, this helps us find solutions for the original min and max problems. The solution set that solves the min and max uh, problem can be characterized by the expression at the bottom here, which looks complex, but essentially simply says that the robust rule has to be consistent with the posterior implied by the worst case uh, perturbations that solve the maximum conditional entropy problem. The complexity of this expression arises simply for the fact that when we consider the perturbations over the constraint set, the corresponding minimax solutions are not necessarily unique because the perturbation solutions do not necessarily have full support over the whole set. And hence, the decision rules do not necessarily have to be uniquely defined on those off-support parts. However, ultimately, our main result offers that solving the max entropy problem will help find the minimax robust solutions to the original robust ML formulation. This corollary of our main results helps show that the expression of the solution set is not really as complicated as it looks. First, we can define a set uh, D star that contains all of the distributions in the constraint set that achieved the maximum conditional entropy. Then, for all of the distributions in the set D star, we consider the corresponding set Q of P star, which is the set of all decision rules that are best for that particular joint distribution on X, X and Y. Now, because the P star uh, worst case perturbations achieve the maximum conditional entropy, this sets, these sets Q, Q of P stars are simply characterized uh, by the, the conditional distributions that are consistent with the posterior for y given x for the corresponding p star. This simply says that where p star has support, the decision, the corresponding decision rule is defined over the support for the variable x with respect to p star. Hence, if over all of the uh, jo joint distributions in d star, the distributions, uh, the support of those distributions cover the space of X, then the solution set will contain exactly one point as defined as the decision rule that are consistent with the posteriors of all of the P stars and D star. Further, if there's just a P star and D star that has full support over X with respect to its marginal P of X, then the optimal decision rule is simply given by the Theorier of the label given X for that particular P star. For our min and max equality result, it was actually essential that we generalize the adversary to allow it to have mixed or stochastic strategies. Um, this min and max result, by being able to flip the order of the min and max, illustrates that there's no inherent disadvantage to the concept of playing first or playing second with respect to the adversary. However, if we consider an alternative formulation where the adversary remains restricted to pure strategies or deterministic strategies, then there is a disadvantage of playing first. And this could be seen by this alternative formulations where the adversary must behave deterministically, only a min and max inequality holds. And in general, this inequality will be a strict inequality. So here in this formulation on the left-hand side, we have the original style of robust ML formulation, where it's considering the worst case perturbation inside of the, inside of the expectation. This can be taken out of the expectation by considering a function um, that maps from X and Y to Z. But restraining this to be a deterministic function and swapping the order of the min and the max results in a strict inequality here. And this strict inequality we can show uh, can be shown with this simple example, where we simply have uh, a five element alphabet for X and Y, uh, where the two random variables are uh, X and Y are, are equal to each other, probably one, and they're uniform over just the elements zero, two, and four. Now, if we adopt a simple absolute 
uh, distance uh, distortion metric, and we set the epsilon, the, the, the distortion limit to one, then really the only reasonable stochastic perturbations that we consider are given by this figure, this diagram on the right hand side. These are the only reasonable perturbation strategies to consider for the sake of optimization. Now, what's interesting is that if you allow a stochastic adversary, the optimal thing to do is to map the x equals y equals 2 case to 1, z equals 1, and z equals 3 with 50-50 probability. And in this case, this achieves maximizing um, the conditional entropy to be the binary entropy function of 1 over 3. On the other hand, if you're restricted to a deterministic adversary, uh, the only thing you can do is to set alpha equal to 0 or 1, since it has to be a deterministic mapping from x, y to z. In this case of a deterministic adversary, uh, the solution of the left-hand side uh, minimax uh, problem uh, shown above is the binary uh, is equal to the binary entropy function of one over three. However, on the right hand side, because the adversary has to be pick and, picked first, and the decision rule can be picked second with the inner minimization, the value of that game is only two thirds times log of two, which is less than the left hand side solution. Thus, this shows that a saddle point uh, does not exist if you restrict yourself to look at only pure strategy deterministic adversaries. A well-observed phenomenon in the literature is that when a robust model is uh, learned in order to be resilient to adversarial example attacks, we see a degradation in the performance of that model on the clean data that is not perturbed. This degradation can be uh, understood through a theoretical analysis from the perspective of this information theoretic framework. First, the ideal base risks the optimal cross entropy loss on the clean data for a non robust model is simply given by the conditional entropy of the label variable given the data features variable with respect to the original clean data distribution. Now, when we apply a robust model Q star instead of the optimal clean data model, which is just the posterior, the loss for that robust model on the clean data will be strictly larger, basically the conditional entropy plus a KL term that captures the divergence between the posterior with respect to the clean data distribution and the robust decision rule Q star. And finally, for the robust model Q star, when you consider the worst case loss under an adversarial examples attack, you're left with the maximum conditional entropy with respect to the distributions that you're allowing in your constraint set. And in general, each one of these is successfully larger than the last. Thus, this notion of a clean data penalty for bus models can be seen as a mismatch between the robust decision rule and the statistics of the data distribution. We explore the effects of this mismatch in the plots uh, below. To summarize our work, we present a minimax result that draws the connections between robust machine learning theory and privacy utility trade-off theory. This minimax result offers an approach toward attaining robust models. We can solve the max entropy problem to find the worst case universal adversarial perturbation independent of finding a robust model. Then when we consider the optimal response to this universal adversarial perturbation, we can use that to produce a robust model. Uh, a key observation in the development of this framework and theory is realizing that considering stochastic adversaries is necessary for a saddle point and the minimax result to properly hold. And ultimately, connections to privacy utility trade-off theory help us understand the clean versus robust performance trade-offs. More details about our work can be found in our extended version of our paper on our archive, um, which also contains the generalization of our main result to continuous alphabets. And it also includes a fixed point characterization of the optimal con condition, maximum conditional entropy solutions under Washington ball constraints. In ongoing work that is under submission, we are investigating and applying this framework to actually learn 
uh, robust classification methods. Thank you for your attention.